What's going on guys? Welcome to Fearless Friday. So today we're gonna talk about the four essential keys to having a solid interaction. And I curated this list based off the things that I do that work for me when I have great interactions, when I have really, really, really good ones that land me numbers and dates and all that kind of fun stuff. So if you embody these and implement them, you guys will start seeing results right away. I guarantee you. Now, before we jump into that, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hit like and subscribe because we're constantly putting out videos. Brian's putting out like two or three videos a week, live Q and A's. I'm putting out a video every Friday. We've got models coming on that we are interviewing to get a, fem a female's perspective on things, but we also have dating coaches from other companies come on as well so that you guys get the whole perspective on dating and what works and what doesn't. So be sure not to miss out on those videos. Hit like and subscribe. Also, stay to the end of the video because we're gonna give you guys a bonus tip because again, these particular essentials are going to change the results that you get and you guys will start getting numbers and we'll start getting dates. So the bonus material is a way to get around the texting thing that guys are having problems with because we all know texting puts us in our heads and that's one sure way to kill or sabotage a really great in-person interaction by getting in your head over text and blowing the whole thing out. So don't do that, stay to the end of the video and watch the bonus. Now, let's get into it. Four essential pieces for solid interactions. Now, the reason I curated this list like this is because I look at the way I do my approaches and when I have success, what things are working for me, right? And the first thing that's always working for me is that I'm always feeling my feet, right? I'm always feeling the ground beneath me. So I'm always grounded to the earth and not up in my head not up in my chest, not high in my body. I'm feeling the ground beneath me and I'm relaxed. So that when I walk up to a girl who might be nervous on average, which, which they actually are nervous a lot of the times. And I know a lot of us guys don't see that because we're like, we don't think that they will be nervous to talk to us, but it's actually not true. A lot of the times they're actually nervous. So in order for me to ground their nervous energy, I have to ground myself, which means that I have to keep my awareness or my consciousness on my feet so that I don't go up into my head and start thinking about what to do next and thinking about what to say. The more rooted I am into the ground, the more solid I feel in the interaction, the more slowed down my speech becomes, the more in tune and present in the moment I become. And those things are definitely noticeable to women when you're talking to them. They know that when a guy is a little bit racier or he's talking fast or he's in a rush, he feels a certain way versus the guy who feels his feet, who feels his leg. Think about sports athletes. They're very embodied, right? They take their time and they speak slow. It's because they're feeling their body, they're enjoying it. And that's what the feet do when you feel them. So a great way to do that is to bring your conscious awareness to your feet. You can even do it in a way where it's like, right now think about your big toe. Think about the big toe on your right foot and just think about it. And just notice how all of a sudden you start to become aware of that big toe a little, a little bit more. You start to feel the sensations and you start to feel a lot more in that toe than you were before I mentioned it. Now try like your left pinky toe, right? Now notice how all of a sudden that toe is starting to turn on. This is how it works. When you're in an interaction, you want to feel your feet on the ground, your feet on the earth or the feet on the soles of your shoes. So it takes you out of being in your head because there's nothing worse than being in your head when you're talking to somebody because you're not present, because you're probably worried about what's gonna happen next, the awkward silence, a whole host of things that you shouldn't be worried about, you should be present. Now, the second thing, which is also very, very, very important is become an emotional listener. Brian literally just did a video on this a couple, a couple of days or a couple of weeks ago. Go back and watch it, find it and watch it. Emotional listening or being a good listener is essential to finding what to say next. But it's also essential in letting the girl know that you're present with her and that you're there and that you're not trying to bombard her or push on her and just keep trying these different techniques that don't work. The more present and the more affected you are by what she's telling you, like if she's telling you a sad story or an exciting story and you let that into your body and you start feeling that sadness or that excitement and you respond from that place of feeling, it's gonna have so much of a greater effect on her. She's gonna to wanna to talk to you a lot more, right? Now, if you're going into your head, you're cutting off your ability to feel your emotions. So don't do that. Slow down, let her words affect you and respond from a place of feeling, okay? 
that's what's going to work for you guys. That's going to make the girl want to talk to you and want to get to know you more and start asking questions about you because all of a sudden she becomes curious about you and why you are so good at listening because you're a lot different than most guys when girls are actually talking, okay? So let that one settle in. Practice this one, especially. Now, the third thing here pairs with the last thing we talked about, and that's curiosity. It's very hard to be curious about someone when you're worried about what you're worried about yourself, or you're worried about what you're going to say next, or you're worried about your anxiety or your nervousness. Let all that go and be present. Eckhart Tolle talks about this in, in um, the book called Stillness Speaks, right? And the beauty in that is that the masculine is stillness. The feminine is flow, energy. The more still and present you become, the more a woman will go into her feminine and start to become more expressive, more flowy, right? The nature, the way it's supposed to be, creates a polarity. The more still and present you get with her, creating eye contact, feeling your body, enjoying your body, you'll start noticing a lot of things about her. Maybe you'll notice her earrings. Maybe you'll notice the way she did her hair. Maybe you notice the clothes that she's wearing is very unique. Maybe she's a fashionista. Maybe she's a designer. You'll notice these things that you didn't notice before when you were overthinking. Now, that gives you so much material to go off of if you guys don't know what to say. It's like, tell me about those earrings. Tell me about these clothes. Did you make them? Did you design them? Tell me about that. How long have you been designing? Right? Real genuine curiosity. And people love when you're actually curious about them. But people also know when you're being disingenuous. Right? So slow down. Be present. Ground yourself. Feel your feet again. And and be present enough to be curious or find something that you're curious about and then start talking about that. And the next thing is super important because a lot of times guys will go up to girls, approach girls, interactions will go so butter smooth and well, but the girls always leave feeling like the guy wasn't interested even though he was. And that's because he's not suggesting, right? So you guys gotta get used to suggesting. Be the suggester. What does a suggestion look like? What does a suggestion, a suggestion look like? Let's say, hey, you should give me your number so we can hang out some time. Well, cool. Well, hey, give me your number. Let's kick it. Um, there's an event coming, X, Y, and Z, whatever date. Doesn't matter, right? Be the person, be the cause, be the person who gets the number, sets the date up, moves it forward. Because again, you're the masculine. That's what women are already expecting of you. And when you don't do it, they won't do it because they're not trained to do that. It actually feels out of the element to do that, right? So as men, we have to do that. We want it, so why aren't we going for it and selling the deal? And again, I see it all the time. Guys will have great interactions with the girls and they're not asking for numbers and they're not trying to get these girls on dates. And you're just throwing all that opportunity, all that effort that you put in for nothing. So suggest, right? Maybe have some things in the back pocket, you know? Ask her what she's into. Maybe she's into throwing a Frisbee around at the park, hanging out having picnics, coffee, boba, tea, you know, a walk on the beach, something like that, hanging out. It can be anything, but be the person who suggests it, okay? The more you do that, the more you increase the chances that something's actually gonna happen for you, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, start implementing all four of these things on a daily basis. If you're going out and you're doing three approaches a day, implement each one of these in your approaches. Feel your feet. Become way more present with the person that you're talking to. Get out of your own way right? Become an emotional listener. Be curious. Suggest. Ask. Get the number, okay? Now, there's a bonus piece that I want to give you guys so that you guys can really, really, really hone in on not sabotaging the beautiful situation you guys just created in your interaction. That is how to get past the texting thing. Like, a lot of guys have anxiety about texting. They'll have great interactions with a girl, but when it comes to the actual texting part of it, they sabotage all that work that went into that great interaction because they got into their head about texting. Here's how you do that. Tell her that you're old fashioned and that you prefer calling. Girls love that, right? Because there's a bit more tension in talking on the phone with the person, but there's a lot more perks to talking on the phone versus actually texting them. Now, if you start calling them on the phone, they'll instantly remember why they liked you in the first place. Because in a text, they won't remember your voice. In a text, they won't remember any of that. But on a call, they'll remember your, your, your tonality, your voice infliction. 
how solid you were in your voice, how deep your voice was, how grounded you felt in person. And they need to remember why they chose you or why they chose to give you their number. So guys, that's a tidbit that I love doing. Also, you can also send voice messages instead of texting as well. So go out there and use it. Let me know the results you guys are having with it. All right, guys, I know this stuff works for a fact, and I know it's gonna work for you if you actually go out and implement it. If you don't, then you're gonna have what you've already been getting, the same thing, okay? Anyways, guys, love shooting these videos for you. I'll see you guys in next week's video. Peace, and remember, only the confident really live.